everyone. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us for our tur Turkish cooking class tonight. Um, my name is Evan Verplu. I'm the program coordinator uh, with the IRC, and we're uh, so pleased to welcome Evan Burrell, um, who has uh, graciously donated her time. And I might add, um, jumped in at the last second. Originally, her mother was uh, planning to teach this class. She was unable to, um, and Evan has jumped in here um, just in the last few days. So I can't thank you enough for, um, for donating your time, uh, Evan, and also everyone who is, who is um, who's joined us here um, for an IRC program on this uh, beautiful Monday evening. Um, so the IRC is a nonpartisan apolitical organization that provides a platform for greater understanding of international topics and how they intersect with the Kansas City community. Um, for uh, our respect for, for Emin and every, everybody else, uh, we certainly invite you to have your cameras on for the program. But if you could keep yourself muted um, while you're not speaking, that way um, we can avoid any uh, audio interference. But we invite you at any time to, to jump in with, with questions for, for Emma as she, as she takes us through her, her meal. So um, we are going to be recording this program and uh, broadcasting it live to Facebook. So if you do have any issue with that, uh, just turn off, turn off your camera. But um, please, uh, please, if you're comfortable, uh, leave it on. It uh, it's, makes it much more of a, a community event if we can all, all see your faces. Um, and if you would like to connect with us further at the IRC, um, always head to irckc.org and um, find out what we have upcoming and uh, how you can get involved. So without further ado, I will pass it off to, to Emin and um, thank you again, everyone. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's good. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird coming up like this. I, w I hope uh, all this coronavirus, everything just goes away and everything goes back to normal. But we just have to make the best of things. So, welcome everybody. Today I'm going to be uh, teaching you three things. Uh, these are like, uh, with my family, we try to not stay a lot in the kitchen while cooking. Uh, but we usually, like, 95% of the time we always cook for our family. Uh, so, we always try to cook between 30 and 45 minutes. Uh, so, that, so, today we're going to make a dinner uh, for two. So today we're going to make salad. It's a really simple thing, but it's really good. And then we're going to make um, rice, Turkish rice, and then um, chicken. It's going to be a creamy, uh, cheesy chicken. It's going to be really good. I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start. Any questions before starting? So um, you can always join in, ask questions, talk, I'm fine with it. I'll do my best to answer your questions. So we're going to start off by, um, pre I, I have already pre-soaked a cup of rice. So um, I'm going to go ahead and strain this, first of all. Uh, it's really important to uh, pre-soak your rice because it gives it, it gives a better texture while you're eating it. So I'm just I'm just gonna pre uh, I just drink this so that the excess water could just drain off. Okay, so I'm taking a pot. It's good always to get a high pot for your uh, rice so that you know it can cook better. Uh, to this, uh, I'm gonna add. Uh, a, tea, uh, a tablespoon of butter, quickly. And you can always, you know, um, like a teaspoon by, you know, there's, there's always these lines, just cut it along that side. So one tablespoon of butter would be enough. And we're just gonna put that. So Turkish people usually use these small macaroni type of things. They're called vermicelli. I hope I'm pronounced, pronouncing that correctly. Uh, you can usually buy them in Asian stores or even Walmart. So I'm going to use, use one fourth of this uh, small macaroni, the small vermicelli, and just put it in. So we're, the, the goal here is to make them brown with the butter. 
So I don't know if you guys can see it right now, but while it's getting brown, I'll just show. So when it's when it just got when it gets brown, I'll just show it to you. Um. So let's talk a little while that gets done. So I, right now I live in Greensboro, in North Carolina. So my mom called me. She said that I have to be somewhere. I forgot it, and then could you please take my place? I said sure. Uh, <laughs> So like, I think today I forgot the times. Like It seems that I'm forward than you guys. I was just texting, texting even saying that Evan and that, hey, I'm here. Are you guys online? He said, you're two hours early. <laughs> yes. So, okay, so they're kind of getting ready to be brown. I'll just show you how when it's when they start getting brown. But I don't know if you guys can see it. Can you guys see this? Like, you know, the butter is boiling, like getting bubbly, and soon it's gonna become brown. So the goal is to make it an even brown all over. Oh <laughs> come on, let's talk. How did you um have you been cooking cooking your whole life? Evan? Well, well, my mom, she loves, she loved, like, I used to try to cook, but my mom always like, you know, gotta be careful, like, I can cook for you guys, so, but I was always helping her, but uh, I started especially baking when I was 12 years old, like, what, I always wanted to become a baker, well, ended up becoming a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it looked like Marsha asked, uh, what part of Turkey is your family from? Oh, well, uh, my father is from Mekshe here. He, he lives in Cappadocia. I think most of you guys are familiar with that. It's in the city of Cappadocia. And uh, my mom, she lives in Aydin. It's, it's, it's near Antalya where, you know, the sea is good, stuff like that. But all our lives, especially like after we were born, we were always... Um, going all around the world. Like, I think I changed around eight to nine uh, schools, like, came to my university. Wow. So, I, we had to live a lot in different places. So, do you, do you guys see it? It becomes, it is brown right now. Uh -huh. You may think, oh, God, it's burning, but it's not. It's right, brown right now. So, uh, we're going to add this pre-soaked rice. Uh, so this is a lot of okay, the thing is, Turkish people they accept rice to be good when uh, when it's not sticky. If you manage to make your uh, rice as uh, not sticky as possible, this means you're a good chef in your kitchen. So, but if if your rice starts sticking, you can't serve that food to your guests because that means your rice failed. So you have to kind of start over or serve something else to your um, guests or like. But yeah, so the so you can uh, to make your rice not sticky. After you add in your rice into the pot, uh, just try to make it as dry as possible. So right now I am. Just, you know, mixing it slowly, gently, without breaking the rice. So once it starts to, you know, kind of crack, it means that, okay, your rice is ready. Um, so right now, we'll, we're just going to kind of wait for it to dry up. I know that we're... Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I know that you're going to have chicken. Them, but what do they have predominantly other is it beef fish tr uh, lamb chicken what, goat what is it, what are the predominant meats in turkey well actually you know turkish people like turkish people like turkey is kind of so when you go towards the north people love to eat chicken and especially meat like they they count if there's no meat in there for their lunch or there for their dinner 
don't count it as big. They don't like it. Don't count it as food. <laughs> but once you go towards the other side, like my, my mom's part, like the place where my mom lives, like Antalya, Izmir, uh, Aydin, those kind of places, cities, they don't um, cook a lot of meat, but they, they're more, um, the, the dinner, the food are more vegetable based with olive oil. So olive oil is really important in those sides because they don't uh, feel that the other types of oils like vegetable or corn, corn oil, they're not healthy. So they always stick with olive oil. So when I go to my father's side, we usually eat meat or chicken. Uh, but when we go to my mom's side, we usually eat um, vegetables. Uh, but because I don't know, like my brother, so I have three brothers and me, but like the boys in our family, they really love eating chicken and meat. So we like we usually have chicken and meat, but my mom, if she makes chicken and meat to like my mom, like my brothers or my dad or stuff, she usually cooks a small batch for herself with vegetables. So yeah, uh, well, but we we try to balance it out in the family. Okay, so as you see, uh, let me just show it to you. The rice is like, it's so, like, it's not uh, sticky anymore. There is no water anymore. So uh, this means it's ready. So um, usually people also like to uh, add in chicken stock or vegetable stock or beef stock to their uh, rice, which I will add one cup of um, chicken stock. I made this at home. So I usually freeze them up like this. So it's really, it's the it's also usable and then you can always, you know, it's tastier and healthier. So I'm just going to put one cup of uh, chicken stock and then one cup of water. So to one cup of um, rice, you put two cups of water. If you're going to make two cups of rice, put four cups of water. It goes on like that. Uh, so the, now here you have to first... So put your stove on high, very high, so that it can boil. And then once you see that it starts boiling, put it on medium, uh, low, medium low. So also, the most important part, we have to add in salt. So you can uh, add salt according to your taste. And the easiest thing like, to just see if your salt is right, just go ahead, like, try to taste the water of your rice. If you think it's good, your rice is going to be good too. So I'm just going to give this a little mix. Okay. And I'm just going to wait for this to boil. Once that's done, I'm just going to put the food there and then start off with our chicken. So let me just go ahead and start it. So in my uh, stove, I have numbers from one to nine. But first I put it on the nine. And once I see that it's boiling, I put it on a four or a five. It depends on how your stove is. Yes. Um, oh, by the way, one, once uh, you just put it on your lid so that you can get the process faster. Does anyone have any uh, other questions about either Turkish cuisine, Turkish culture, or anything for, for Evan? Anybody? Okay. What are some traditional Turkish spices? Oh, so like Turkish spices are really, really, really simple. Uh, people usually like to use um, red paprika. Uh, they like to use um, crushed peppers, red peppers, and uh, black peppers. That's the main three things that are, that are used in uh, Turkey. But once, as I said, once you go towards the north, people like to eat more spicier. So they usually add cayenne pepper or different types of pepper powders into their food. But, you know, uh, Turkish people don't really use a lot of spice like how Indian people use or how, you know, different uh, countries that, that they use. It's like most of, like, what I think, people, Turkish people like the food to be more simple, like to get the real, mm, get the real taste of the, what do you call, the chicken or the, the 
meal that they're eating. So, oh, by the way, um, my started to boil. As you can, I hope you guys can see it. So, since it's boiling, I'm just gonna uh, put this on medium low. And this usually cooks uh, within 20, 25 minutes. So, once you see that, oh, there is no more water left and your rice is soft and it's really tender, that means it's ready. So, let's give it 20, 25 minutes. So, I'll just put that here. So, that's the rice. So as you've seen, I don't know how many minutes we. So, 60 minutes to make the rice. Uh, so, now we can go to our pan. Now we're gonna start with our chicken dish. Uh, by the way, I hope I answered your question good. Wait, good. You did. Uh, also, you're also gonna see that uh, I'm also gonna add in our food to our chicken. I'm also gonna add in, oh, by the way, they also use oregano. Yeah, people also use oregano a lot. Uh, so again, I have uh, got some chicken, I diced them into small cubes, and I, I took around 450 grams of uh, chicken, which is like 60 knots. Uh, so, please. So, the, so, you know, usually when we make chicken, it, it tends to become dry sometimes. So, a, a couple of years ago, I found out that if you cook your chicken in really high heat, uh, really high um, heat, you're, you're going to get a really good tender and juicy chicken because chicken is not like meat. It, it cooks really fast. So right now, we're going to open our stove to a high heat, and then we're just going to wait for it, for the pan to get heated up. Also, I'm not going to use a lot of... Um, oil at first, or like, I'm not even planning to use any oil right now. I'm just gonna put the chicken on the hot pan because we're gonna add in one cup of cream and then uh, around 100 grams of cheese on top of it. So it becomes really oily. So but when you, once once you put the oil in and you know, all this, it becomes, it, it's not really good. And plus, you know, uh, the chicken, if like, the chicken I'm using is, um, Chicken thigh. It, it does not have any bones, so it's boneless chicken thigh. Chicken thigh also has like it tends to have some uh, fat also to it. So when we are going to see once we start cooking it, it's going to release out uh, water, juice, like and the fat. So uh, the fat content would be enough to you know make the chicken brown. So let me just see. You can feel the heat coming up. This means it's ready. So we're just going to put in our chicken. Just be slow with it. You don't have to, you know, mix it up all the time. Let it just sit for some time like this. And once you see a lot of water uh, coming out and you think it's ready, just give it a few, mix a few times. And um, once the whole chicken, like, if you don't see any more reddish on your chicken, this, it means it's ready. So, uh, and then we're gonna add in one half a medium uh, onion, chopped onions, and one clove of garlic. That's also chopped. So as you see, it's the base has become whiter. I don't know if you guys can see it. Like the top is pink, but the base is white. So let's just mix it up. You don't also have to put a lid on it because once you put a lid on your chicken, it releases all the water up and then it becomes um, really dry again. So these are my own experiences though, but if you think it's the other way around, just go ahead and speak up. Uh, we had a, a question come in saying that you mentioned you wanted to be a, a baker earlier and uh, Julie asked, what are some of your favorite uh, Turkish pastries to make? Oh, um, huh. that's good. That's a good question. Well, um, the truth is, hmm. 
Well, when I'm in Turkey, I usually love eating the eclairs there, you know, the cake they make, like, Turkey, like, when I go to Turkey, the, the way people, you know, serve you, it's always stylish. It has, it's so beautiful with those extra bits of flowers or, you know, those uh, sauces all around your plate. So, but, um, so in terms of baking, you know, cakes and all, um, it's, I, I feel like it's kind of universal because, uh, you know, like, like everything right now, you can get everything around the world really easy. And like, he, you, thanks to YouTube, like you can make everything. So when I go to Turkey, usually I like to eat cakes or eclairs or like, uh, there are also like German baked, uh, cook like, um, German cakes over there because it, like Turkish people also go oh, to Germany a lot. Uh, especially to, to during the history, you can find a lot of Turkish people in Germany. So, um, well, but in terms of baking, I don't really know if Turkey really has its own dish, or maybe I'm not well, thinking straight, or I just forgot. But you know, Turkey really has a lot of sweet dishes, like the Turkish delight or baklava. Turkish people make those a lot. But I don't know whether they go into the Turkish, like the baking category or not. So, but uh, yeah, there there are a lot of like um, Turkish sweets, like uh, it's called shekar pare. It's it's like a cookie, but it's soaked in syrup. It's really nice, but you know those kind of things come really heavy for me. It's good to eat once in a while though. But I love baking right now. So since I, I did mention to Evan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just mentioned to him that I started baking like two years ago. And I, I started slowly selling my bakes away. So it's been good. I've been learning a lot. Um, so I've also learned how to make American uh, buttercream. So the cake is like... It really uh, differentiates in America and in Turkey. Like Turkish people tend to use different kind of creams, where Americans use different kind of creams. So like the uh, like buttercream or like frost. Uh, what do you call it? cheese buttercream? What's that? Right now I just forgot. But well, I learned a lot though, uh, and it's really good to use. Like I love putting those two different, um, or those, like, putting those uh, different recipes together, because once you put them all together and, like, use different creams on your cake, people really love it. Okay, um, so at this point, my chicken is no longer red, so it's all white all around. So I'm going to add in the, the onions and the the onions and the garlic clove. So I took one gar large garlic clove and I chopped it up. So I'm just gonna add them in. So the goal here is to make everything brownish. So we're just gonna, you know, sear them till they become more brown, yellowish brownish. And then once that's done, we're gonna add in our, um, Oh, at this point, you can go ahead and um, oh, open up your um, stove. Sorry, your, I'm sorry, I think I'm too excited. Um, <laughs> what do you call that, guy? Oven. The oven, right. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> so we're going to open up our oven to 450 is the Fahrenheit. And then you're going to put this food to like for 10 minutes. And then we're going to boil it for two to three minutes, and then it's going to be done. So I'll just go ahead, open it up. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. Okay. So while that's you now getting brown, any other questions? So we had, uh, we had a question come in that, that mentioned that you were using pre-soaked rice. Um, what what exactly is the is is the process for for pre soaking? Oh, oh. It, it's really simple. You just uh, you know, I just took one cup of rice and just put it in the water. That's it. So that so and 
you can always soak your rice uh, 30 minutes or one hour prior to cooking. That will really then make your, um, it, it will really ease the cooking process, plus it will, it will give you a better taste. Perfect. Yeah, that's it. Do you drain the water, Stan? Yes, yes, yes. After a while before cooking, uh, you just go ahead and drain it and then wait for the excess water to go out while you're, you know, putting, like, cooking your butter or your vegetable or the vermicelli that I just used. So, till then, it really, like, it drains out all the excess water and then you just start cooking with it. Um. And then uh, Marsha asked, uh, do, do Turkish people eat, primarily eat their meals at home? Is there as big a, you know, uh, going out to eat restaurant culture like there is in the United States? Well, um, it's, uh, the thing is like the restaurant culture in Turkey, people usually tend to go to restaurants on special events. Uh, but right now, uh, it's been like several years not going to Turkey. But I have seen that the culture is changing right now. People tend to go and take, uh, take like go out and eat a lot, um, especially the young. Uh, well, uh, when I was like, when I was uh, around my teenage times, we used to go and eat a lot of fast food because like it was something new to Turkey, I guess. Uh, it was accepted a little bit more late. Right now, like when I talk to my friends or when I look at some programs, you can see that more people tend to, especially working uh, people, you know, uh, their husbands, like the couples who work, so they tend to go out and buy food, but uh, usually it's not considered good in Turkey. So people like you're, it's like if I was, if I was a mom, I wouldn't really like except my child eating outside every day or every, like, so uh, people like mothers or grandmothers, they tend to cook for their kids more so that they don't go outside and eat. So it's uh, considered very unhealthy. So, uh, but I guess uh, it's kind of been tending, like people are still going out, like that thing has raised up more. Oh, by the way, you can see that the uh, chicken has brown along with uh, the onions. So this means uh, it's kind of ready. So we're just gonna, uh, I'm, I'm using one tablespoon of paprika, uh, half a tablespoon of, uh, sorry, sorry, half, yeah, yeah, half a tablespoon of uh, black pepper, half a tablespoon of uh, oregano, one fourth uh, tablespoon, uh, one fourth teaspoon of uh, rosemary, and what was this? Th thyme. So I'm just gonna add these in. Okay, and then along with it, I'm gonna add in one cup of heavy cream. Okay. So we don't really, we, so the goal here again here is that we're just gonna wait till, you know, the heavy cream kinda um, thickens up. Okay. And then at this time we can get our baking dish ready. So I'm gonna be using this today. Uh, I'll just show you. Yeah. I hope you guys can see it. Like it's more thickened up. Uh, so we're just gonna like go ahead, maybe thirty seconds or one more minute here, and then we're gonna uh, put it in our baking tray. So it's really simple. So once we put that onto our tray uh, or baking uh, baking uh, ware, we're just gonna add in some mozzarella cheese and then put it in the oven. Okay, I think it's pretty good. It's thickened up. Okay, we'll just close off and close the stove. Transfer this into our baking pan. Okay, let me just put that here. Okay, we have it here. Uh, so right now, 
I'm going to add a sprinkle on or put in 100 grams of cheese, mozzarella cheese. And if you guys are like not eating chicken, you can always like use beef or even vegetables. It's really good. Zucchinis, squash, eggplants. Okay. I covered up my dish with mozzarella. Here it is. I'm going to put this into our oven for 10 minutes. It's on 450 Fahrenheit. So I'll just go ahead. Hmm. Let me check in the rice. Okay, our rice is ready too. And the important part, part about rice is that once it's cooked, leave it uh, for like, leave it to last for 10 or 15 minutes before you, before you serve it. It becomes even better. So I'll just move it here to the salt. Okay, and the last thing, um, I find this dinner a little heavy because you know it has heavy cream, it has rice and mozzarella cheese and all all of this. So rather than serving it with uh, like rather than serving a, a dessert after this, I really like uh, to serve a uh, fruit. It's more healthier. It's lighter, it's better. And I just read, um, I think yesterday, that people should not be eating the fruits right immediately right after uh, dinner because it could be unhealthy. So, but it's, it, it seems they, they prefer, like, they uh, advise us to eat it after an hour or one and a half hours. It seems much better once we kind of start digesting our food. Um, sorry to interrupt, but um, Pat asked for if you happen to could give these spice quantities again. Yeah, yeah. So I used um, one tablespoon of red paprika. You can also like swap it with one one half a tablespoon of red paprika and half a tablespoon of cayenne if you like it. And then I used half a tablespoon of oregano, half a tablespoon of um, uh, pepper and then one fourth tablespoon um teaspoon i guess teaspoon of um thyme and what do you call thyme and rosemary Perfect. yeah thank you yeah i can also write up these uh, uh measurements for you guys later on it yeah. will be more easier for you guys that would be great and the last part we're going to be making salad so you're not really but it's really good. So uh, here, I had made some and then I thought we could do this together. So I have, so all together, I'll, I'll be using six leaves of Romanian um, lettuce and then two tomatoes. You can use any one as preferred. Two uh, cucumbers and then Half, half of a medium onion. So we're just gonna like chop these up. So I've already chopped up three of these Romanian lettuce. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the rest. So it's really good if you'd like do it really thin as possible. Uh, Turkish people really love to eat um, salad with their food. Whatever you make, you always make a salad. <laughs> it's like they also prefer to um, drink um, have soup before everything. First soup, and then the, like, the main over like in Turkey, you can eat rice, or they also use bulgur. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's kind of a it's it's, it's they have a good relationship with a wheat, I guess. So they usually like to eat that. Um, they, so and then the main dish, with with the main dish, they like to eat um, salads. After that, they like to and like the thing in Turkey is that people love to drink tea. Like in America, it's coffee. In Turkey, it's tea. Like as you see, we like 
whoever you go to in Turkey, you'll always have a teapot on the stove. People love drinking tea, especially my mom. <laughs> I've never seen her without tea. She always has a cup of tea everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, so immediately after dinner, people love to drink tea with, like, with their desserts or with, like, and after the desserts, they love to eat fruit. <laughs> Can you say something about Greek yogurt? I dated a Turkish guy for a while, and he ate Greek yogurt with everything. Is that normal, or was that just him? No, it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just show you guys something really quick. So... <laughs> Also in Turkey, like we love to eat yogurt. We also prefer to make yogurt at home. So every week I make one pot of yogurt. Well, at home I'm the one who loves to eat yogurt. So I just made this yesterday night. So as you can see. So in Turkey, we don't eat yogurt by adding sweets. Rather, people like to eat Greek yogurt with salted rather than sweets. So people also love to eat it plain with rice with with their main dish. So it's something like <laughs> as you said, people love it. Also if they don't if they're not able to drink eat it with along with their food, they usually mix water and then make iron. So it's watered um uh, Greek yogurt. So that's also really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've chopped in, chopped our uh, lettuce, and then I'm going ahead and chopping our uh, cucumbers. So I'm just, I just sliced it in, into two, and I'm just going to, um, wait, let me see. Okay, I'm gonna slice it one more time, then from the middle, and then chop it off. Okay, any other questions? Um, if you, if, if say for instance, you uh, were going to, to Turkey, if someone was going to Turkey for the first time, what are some, um, what are some cities, what are some things that you would see? I know it's a, it's a huge country and um, it's a, it's a big question, but what are, what are some of your favorite um, part, parts of Turkey or things to do? Um, yeah. yeah, oh, this is a great question. Well, most of my life, I was also a tourist in Turkey, and I've um, lived in Turkey for four or five years. But um, over the years, we always used to go to Turkey every year. So my, I would advise you guys to go all around Istanbul. It's a magnificent city. There is historical sites everywhere, like, literally everywhere, and it's really good. Like, it may seem really congested, the whole city, but once you get along with it, and you're, and I used to get, I used to love getting lost in Istanbul because you could always find new things there. Uh, yeah, and other than Istanbul, I would uh, suggest you guys to go to um, Cappadocia. It's a magnificent city. Izmir is also really good. Um... Oh, by the way, uh, with our school, with our university, with a group of friends, with we went to Akdeniz uh, and Karadeniz. So Karadeniz is a really beautiful, like both of them are really beautiful city, like places. So uh, there is Trabzon. My husband is from Trabzon. <laughs> you can always understand who who are like who are from Trabzon because of their noses it tends to be a little bit more longer <laughs> and you if you see wild things that those people are doing you could always say i think it's from crab zone because like they're, they, they tend to be funny people <laughs> and like they, they do a lot of different things um okay so i also went ahead and cut my tomatoes i forgot to tell you guys so i just um Slice it in between, and then I'm just doing the same thing with our um, uh, cucumbers, a triangle one. So we're just gonna cut it, uh, you know, chop them, cut them as thinly as possible. Okay, and what? Where else? 
Antalya is a beautiful place. A lot of tourists like to go there, but I don't think, because it's a kind of, you know, it's a tourist place, a lot of people come there. I suggest you guys to go to Mula or like places around Antalya because like you could find really beautiful places like the Bahamas or things like I never thought it would be true. But um, with with a friend, his father took us around the mountains in Mula. And, like uh, we went all around it. And then he, he took us to a place, a, a small sea or lake like I don't know what that place was, but it was like heaven. It was so beautiful. The water, no matter how deep it is, you could always see it underneath all the fishes, all the rocks there. It was beautiful. Yeah, so I think that's it. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Um, we have a, a, a question asking if, if you spoke Turkish in your, in your home growing up. Was that always a part of? Um, yes, we, we always spoke Turkish. Well, at a point, at some point, we started forgetting, but my parents never wanted us to forget uh, where we were from. So he, my father, he asked for some of his friends to teach us Turkish. And every year since we were going back to Turkey to visit our grandma, grandpa, and our you know, relatives, uh, we always spoke in Turkish, but people in Turkey used to make a lot of fun of us because <laughs> at some point, point we would forget how to talk and then turn back to English or like I also live in India or like start switching back to Hindi <laughs> so it was like crazy <laughs> but thank god right now it's so much better yeah. like uh, I finished my university in Turkey because I really wanted to live there and like to really understand my culture um, but I think that was like it was really hard because uh, it seems my reading was really bad. I, I could read better in English or in other in other languages. And so I kind of learned Turkish again over there. I had to read more books and like, it was kind of hard, but in the year I was good. I had to back on track. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, and we had a follow up to that. How how do English speaking tourists manage it in Turkey? Is it okay for them to, to get around, or is it is it difficult? <laughs> don't worry. People are always there to help. <laughs> Even if they don't know any English, you're going to see them talking with their body language. Okay, now get get get, get. whoop whoop. Okay, okay. Go 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 go. go. Answer like, instead of saying ask, sor, sor. How about like, um, Sultan Ahmed, Sultan Ahmed, go, 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 go. So don't worry, people are always gonna be there to help you. <laughs> and like, they tend to like, because like in Turkey, um, English is an ESL language, a uh, second language there, like, they're, they, um, they try to learn it. But you know, there are a lot of Turkish, uh, and like it's not really diverse there. People always try to speak in English as much as they can whenever they find the opportunity. So that's great about it. <laughs> and, okay, so our salad is ready. It's time to mix in. So I have uh, juice. Okay, it's here. The juice of half a lemon. Uh, and then we're going to add in some salt. Uh, you can put it as much or as less as you want. And then uh, we're going to add in some olive oil. So this could be around two uh, tablespoons or three. Um, so let's just go with, okay, I think this is two tablespoons. And um, so that's it for the dressing. You can also add in a few drops of vinegar. I find it really good, but uh, some people don't like vinegar. It's all up to you guys. Uh, and then we're just gonna mix it up. And let me find this. No spoons. I put it all them in the dishwasher, so I'll just go ahead with two forks. And yes, woohoo! We're done with our dinner. It's everything is ready. I wish we could all eat this together. <laughs> <laughs> Me too.
That'd be nice. Yeah. Okay, so our salad is ready. Let's go ahead and, you know, make a plate to, like, show you guys what looks. So I think you guys, can you guys see what I do, like, if I put it up here? not sticky it's really you know it's really good it's not sticking anywhere and it smells really good <laughs> so oh by the way if you guys want to know which brand that i use I, I find it uh i find that using different brands it tends to give you different results uh so i bought this from walmart it's the great value um basmati rice you can use this, or if you guys have Aldi, I also like to use Aldi brand, but I don't really know what's the name, but it's really good too. Okay, so let's just put in. Okay, so rice is ready. Looks really good. I had also pre-cooked these. Uh, this is the one that we cooked, but uh, for a second. I think this, these will work better. And this is how your chicken is gonna look like. Um, it's really good. <laughs> Especially start, try to serve this as hot as possible so that, you know, the cheese just whew, goes away. Okay, so we could just go ahead and serve this up here. Whoa, what is this? Hello. Okay. And then add in, put in your salad. And that's it. Your dinner is served. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it looks so good. Uh, <laughs> Thank uh, you so much. Uh, you're uh, welcome. Do you have any, have any uh, final questions or, or thoughts before, before we wrap up? I'm a pretty regular listener, and this has been one of the most fun cooking classes I've ever been to. I, For being a sub, you are an absolute super sub. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so much. Come back and teach us how to make yogurt. Oh, that would be really easy. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. Sure, uh, next time. I would love to do that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll have to get that on the calendar. Well, sure. um, Thank, thank you so much, everyone. Of course, thank you, Evan, for, for, for donating your time tonight. We really, really appreciate it. Um, if you want to learn anything more about the IRC, head to irckc.org. Uh, we have uh, all of our list of full uh, upcoming events there. So um, we hope to see you again soon. And uh, again, thank you, Evan. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. And thank you guys for coming.